Hi there, this is your mentor, the first goat. So today we're actually covering one of my favorites and that is technical analysis. So from now on guys, I want you to actually pay more attention as if you master this course right now, I'm talking about the chapter we're on, you can actually be more than just a consistent trader, you can become one of the best. So the problem with technical analysis is a lot of people do trade technical analysis and they're not seeing the, these are results. The problem is they don't understand that using technical analysis is like any other tool. You need to master how to use it so when properly applied it can actually give you your desired results so without wasting any further time let's jump in so i'm gonna first start with what is technical analysis so technical analysis is a trading discipline employed to evaluate investments and identify trading opportunities by analyzing statistical trends gathered from a trading activity such as price movement and volume like they're saying Trading technical analysis is like a trading discipline. We want you guys to be disciplined because once you master using this tool, you can be more than just a profitable trader, right? I want you to understand that one of the best traders in the world was able to take an account from $1.6,000 to $200 million just using technical analysis. And it's a very important chapter and I want you to concentrate. So as technical analysts, we focus on patterns of price movements trading signals, and various other analytical charting tools to evaluate a security strength or weakness. So using technical analysis, we are able to see the market's weakness. So we use technical analysis to identify what is the market condition. That's what we do. We use it as a tool to know what we're supposed to buy and sell. So we use it to basically understand our entry points and our exit points. So most people only focus on the entry and they don't know when to exit their trade. So we're going to cover that as well. So the tools that we're talking about here are drawing tools, candlesticks, and chart patterns. We're also going to cover some of the most important indicators. Yes, some people do say indicators are lagging because they don't understand the purpose of indicators. Indicators are there to help you, you know, understand what is the market condition. They're not there to help you understand to basically predict the future. That's why they're actually using them incorrectly. So I'm going to help you how to use these patterns and the tools that you need correctly. First, you need to first to understand the purpose or the tools that you have. That is technical analysis. So what it does is it helps us understand the market condition. It helps us understand the area of value, our entry and exit trigger. So what I want to do is I want to help you understand how to combine all these tools to find high probability trading setups. Yes. I'm seeing high probability trading setups. That's just the difference between a beginner and a professional trader. What a beginner does when they enter into a trade, they enter without a stop loss because they're saying a trade is going to be a definite win. And that's an exact opposite of a professional. A professional, what they do, they enter into a trade with a stop loss and take profit in place because their market really don't care about your setup, right? So hence, we always want to make sure we always have a statistical edge to make sure we can become consistently profitable that is following our trading rules we're going to start first with our drawing tools we're going to be focusing on things like trend line trend channel support and resistance that you covered on a previous lesson and our trading setups right so let me just make quickly show you what is our trend line and right? so a trend line is let me just say the market is on a bearish trend so using a trend line guys i don't like to use just a simple line I like using zones because they increase the accuracy of your analysis. So let me just say we have our line here and I'll probably like to have it as a zone. So we use this as a trend line because we need to understand our area of value. So we understand as long as we're on this side, we're looking for, you know, for short. So short is basically sales. We're looking for to continue selling as long as we're under this trend. And that is the reason why we're using trend lines. And when we have it both sides like this, we call it a trend channel, right? So we understand that as long as we're in here, we're in a strong bearish trend. So that's me explaining what a trend and a trend channel is. Support and resistance was covered. And if you still need a recap, it's as simple as understanding the setups here. So at the bottom, we have our support and resistance at the top. So it will be support, resist supporting our trade resisting and supporting that's what that is used for and trading steps you're going to see as we continue with our lesson i want you first to understand why i want to teach you support and resistance more effectively because 
once you you actually know how to use this you're going to learn not only to enter but where to exit too because as technical analysts we are focused primarily on identifying the current market trend including support and resistance areas so once you master how to use support and resistance you're going to learn how to exit which is what most will overlook exiting a trade is one of the psychological factors it's easy to enter into a trade but to exit because what people do they enter into a trade right and they let their losses run they don't have an exit strategy which is something that you need to you need to cut your losses while they're still short let me say that you entered your buy here right you basically made your analysis and you thought it was going even way up way by understanding that we have resistance and support you're going to see that the market can even cross this level here because we haven't seen that yet you know we're not saying it's impossible we're just using probability is we haven't yet so when you enter a buy here you don't have an exit strategy so you're just going to let that loss run hoping it's going to go up and you can see closely here it's just going to blow your account so it's important to have your exit strategy on point so as you can see this is the levels of support and resistance and they can help us understand how long to hold our trades for example let me say i'm entering my buy here hopefully i don't want to hold it up until next year because i understand i have a strong level of resistance here so that's where i want to close my trade that's if i'm swinging right so now without wasting any further time let's continue so trend lines and trend channels right in every trending market whether the trend is going up or down there are buy zones and sell zones which are divided by trend lines so understanding the buy and the sell zones will lead you to being a profitable trader it can lead you to being having profitable trades reason being is when you properly know how to place your trend lines you can easily know that you know where is your area of value where you're going to look for your sales and your buys and that's what we're trying to do so I'll sell high and buy low so like here this will be our nice levels of, of, of sell right using our trend line because it's properly put we know that when we reach these points we're not short you understand because we're saying it's being respecting this trend we want to let it continue doing that so it's important to know that as long as it's on this side we call it our sell zone right only when it crosses that's when we actually look for our buys upon retest when it crosses and it's not a fake out but actually retest it looking for more buy areas that's where we look for our buys so we're going to see this in our charts too so let's go to one of the pairs that we might have so i want to place my trends line more accurately by letting it touch where we have most touches so as you can see this is our trend line so what we are saying is we are looking for buy opportunities as long as it's respecting this trend so whenever we cross and retest that's where we're going to be looking for our sell opportunities right so as long as the market is actually running this side that's where we're going to continue looking for our buys and that's the purpose of using our trend lines so now i'm going to help you how to draw correctly your trend lines because when they're properly executed or not only trend lines but support and resistance because when they're properly executed they can actually ensure that you're going to get profitable trades so when you do that what you're going to need to do first you need to zoom out and see the overall picture right you're going to need to also draw out the most obvious levels there are some levels are too obvious i'm going to show you and you need to adjust to most touches the reason is what we have most touches that becomes a more strong level right so now let's face the chart and let's see how we can analyze a few pairs so when we start with analysis guys first what we need to do we need to use a higher time frame right you need to see the overall picture you can start from a weekly to monthly so i'm just gonna go daily here because it's even a clearer picture so what we need to do first we need to start with our support and resistance so now our left our level of support okay it seems like we have two strong levels here i'm just gonna place my first one here and the last one is not that important now because looking at the current market you know it's still too far to just put that there. I'm just I'm just putting it for the sake of the video now so when you do your first analysis you need to first start with your, your support and resistance because what we need to know is we know this is now a strong level of selling this is where we would sell when we get there this is now our sell zone so here and here we have our two buy zones right so because we know we need to buy low 
and possibly sell high so now let's go to here and then so next what we want to do is to draw our trend correctly we need to adjust it to have more touches so you can see here i have my touch i have my touch here and here as you can see guys it's important for me to have it like this because that's where i'm having i'm getting most of my touches because i'm identifying as a key level and the head like i said before i don't like using just one line because you know i want to make it into a zone to also understand that you know i want it to be more accurate when i enter my trades so this is now my level of, of trend so meaning that when we're in this side this one i'm going to be looking for my buy areas so now that we've crossed this line now i'm looking for my sell entries so now how to find out about those sell entries is to first understand that when you cross a trend you don't just jump in with the sell you need to retest first to confirm that you, you are now going for a sell so what we like doing is is to understand the orders you have people don't understand their tools and that's why they don't actually uh, become profitable in trading so for example let me go to place order here and people only use market execution of which if you have a small account i don't recommend using market execution all the time so it's always better to fish and wait for your trades and i want to show you what i mean by that so for example if i come here you need to see that we have pending orders so we actually have five orders we have an execution we have a buy limit sell limit buy stop and sell stop so i'm going to explain the tables of each so when let's say you have an entry right and the market is basically ranging like this right and you're seeing a nice buy being set but you you know you won't be there to enter that buy right so what you can do is you can set up a buy stop what a buy stop is is a pending order that triggers an entry for you when you're not there so for example the purpose of sending a buy stop is when you see that i have a strong level of support here and you're expecting the market to shoot up but you don't want to enter first because it's going to be playing around a lot you want to make sure your account is safe especially when it's small so you're going to set up your buy stop and when it shoots up you're already in the trade so what are the most important things that you need when you set a trade you need three points you need to have your entry level secondly you need to have your exit when you have a loss and lastly you need to have an exit when you have a profit so your entries should be you are actually um risking one percent to gain two percent doing that ensures that you always have your statistical edge you only have to be there that's basically how you fish for your entries right it helps you win more entries basically you always want to increase your edge to always win the long game right and that's what we use a buy stop for so what a buy limit is you saw that you have a strong uh, let me just say the market is still playing around in here right and you saw that it's actually um cooking to test this level and you won't be around so what you do is you place a buy limit so we use a buy stop to execute by going through and use a buy limit to execute that it's no longer going down it's actually going to go back up so a limit will stop you from going back down and a stop is you executing by going straight up so that's the buy and the buy limit and the, and the buy stop so you place your buy limit here to have a better entry that is buying at the lowest possible point so your limit is there once it touches it and goes back up you're in the trade and you even have a better trade so that's the buy limit and the buy stop so the opposite for a sell stop i'm going to make this brief and easy so uh for your sell stop it's when you actually go down your sell is executed so for your sell limit you're saying it's gonna stop and come back down and that's just how we cover our orders guys so execution is just getting to entry exactly where it is so now we are here so how do we enter this trade now so what we want to do first we need to identify our key level structure of support why it's stopping there so i'm seeing a nice level here of support right so where i want my entries will be is to identify the nice reversal so i'm seeing a nice level here and basically the blue line will be my last one but why would i do that i'm seeing that after a cross i want to enter upon retest 
so by so doing i'm seeing the cell going from here or basically from around here and now let's continue with the current slide so now let's recap what the things that we're going to need when you actually do a technical analysis is to first learn how to draw right so when you draw trend lines your support the reasons your trend channels you need to first zoom out to see the entire picture and the drawing tools that you're going to use are your trend line trend channel support and resistance so now what we're going to cover next is candlesticks very important right this is a method of actually reading your price chart you know you're going to be able to find your open your high your low and your close so they're very useful to help us find our entry and our exit points they can help us act as an entry trigger in our exit tree how can you read the candlestick so i want to start first with the candlesticks so now when you have a bullish candlestick open it will open at the bottom so when you see a low here it means it opened it went down and went back up to create a high and went back down to close around here hence this is why we have this one like this so it is an opposite for a salt so when you know how to properly use these candlesticks you can actually it's a will you know and know when to enter and exit so we use candlesticks in high you know bigger time frames so now let's go to the next slide. so now the three most important candlesticks that we use is the bullish golfing candlestick and the bearish engulfing this is basically the same thing just opposites so for bullish engulfing when a candlestick is open and closed and a buy candlestick opens and it's bigger more bigger than the last one it's basically telling us that you know the buyers are now getting strength to push the market up so the sellers are losing their selling power and the buyers are now in control hence we now have a bullish engulfing which is a nice reversal setup right so the opposite for, for bearish engulfing that's when now the sellers are in control and we see a nice reversal from from a bullish trend so the next ones are the shooting star and the inverted hammer so another one the one i like too is at the morning star so the opposite will be an evening star you're gonna see you're gonna be able to see them in your charts too and they're very nice to spot and nice to help us with trigger and exit so now let's recap candlesticks candlesticks are a method that you usually use to read price chart and price level so we use them as an entry and exit indicator they are very powerful candlesticks the ones that we use that is engulfing pattern the hammer shooting star the morning star right so that's the candlesticks that we use and uh, let's see if we can spot a few what we want to do is uh, like we said before we want to continue with a cell until we have a cross of resistance so also something that i want to note is that when we have a reversal like this this now becomes also a level of structure of support because we were selling now the market's divest it now acts as a level of support so we're looking for future buys as well so we're understanding that you know how to place your support and resistance is going to help you identify those killer buy entries so this is our nice buy zone as you can see here so you want to enter at a retest as you can see it's a nice retest and how did you actually see that being formed you can look closely here using the daily chart with a higher time frame you can see what yes that's right that is the morning star you see not only was it a retest it gave us a nice morning star which showed up right so you will basically have your stop loss around here in your first tp and second tp so we would have lost one but we always win two okay it would seem that we have one of the nice setups too and we actually had an entry like this one this is now the evening star as you can see we have a nice evening star here which is also supported by a resistance right so it is it has acted the resistance before so we know it's still the resistance so it's important to know where you put those resistance and support to show that that i'm sure it's still a key level as you can see if you know how to place your support and resistance you can see that this is still a key level of support as you can see that was a nice key level not only was it a cross cross of resistance retesting supporting which is becoming a resistance and then the evening star in our trade so that's basically losing one to gain six so what we want to do is something i want to share with you guys if we look here we had a support here right so you could have basically getting out here because this one was in here first so you can actually bag this much pips right so i want to show you something important 
that I want you to note what we try to do. So guys, I want you to understand that what we try to do is what MHS avoid doing. For a trader, you need to know that you don't have a problem with losing 10 trades because we minimize our losses by having a stop loss in place. You can easily lose 10 small trades and win one trade and that will create you wealth. The reason I'm saying this is because you have your account, right? And you're losing those 10 small trades, but you only win one big and that will change your game. So what most people do is they do the exact opposite, right? They win small 10 trades and only take one big loss, no stop loss in place, like the one I've shown you and they blow their account. That's what the majority does. I wanna show you how we grow a small account. So we once grew a small account and we're able to grow this account by actually fishing for profits. As you can see, my execution was using buy stops and sell limits. So I once grew this account from $8 and I took it to 100. So as you can see, you know, I want you to see the trades that I took, right? Buy stop, look at it, look at the pitting on us. You know, sell limits and you miss some trades, but it helps you miss losses and you enter the trade that you want. So using our strategy, you can bag 40 to 20 trades in a month. You only need to win 50% to be profitable. As long as you win half the time, using our risk ratio, you're already winning. So you understand the power of the strategy is basically being disciplined. This is why my favorite chapter, as long as you master technical analysis, you can overall always win. So this one is the account that we used. We took it from basically 10K. We took this account of ours from 10K and we were able to grow it to 20K, right? Using only small lots to just test the strategy. That's the importance that I want you to bear in mind if they relax. So now let's move further. So with chart patterns, we've already covered that we want to enter at retests, right? This is the one of the most important things. So now, technical analysis use chart patterns to analyze this emotion and subsequent market movements to understand trends, right? We use these charts of ours to understand how to increase you know our edge so what you want to do is you want to always make sure that you enter when you have an edge that helps you win the long game if you can understand what i'm trying to say as a professional trader you need to know that the most important thing is to have a statistical edge that's how you're going to win the long game every time so you can have a bad week but you never have a bad month that's what i want you to understand so professional technical analysts also have developed new types of trading systems to help them forecast and trade price movements like the strategies that we apply I told you, as long as you know how to apply your tools, you can reach your desired results. So what we use is we use ascending triangle. That is the one that you see here. We use flags. Okay, I don't have a flag here. Let me show you what a flag look like. So let me just... So basically, what a flag will look like is something like this. So the market will basically come from a buy and play around, play around, play around, play around, play around, play around here and shoot down. So it is like, if you look closely, it's like a flag. This is the setup that we use. So these are the most important things. So we also use head and shoulder. And I taught you how to actually apply it theoretically. You're going to also have to apply it, you know, practically. But, you know, this is a nice head and shoulder that you see here. You can see a head and shoulder being formed. So it's actually usually when you get out from a channel, that's when you can actually see your head and shoulder. Right? So it's all about, you know, having your entry points on point and you're going to win the long game. That's the most important part. That's our system, and it's a working system. So now, how to handle your trades, how to trade. So usually when the market moves from the buy zone to the sell zone of an uptrend on the smaller time frame, let's say example one hour, it usually represents a correction. What the correction is, it's like a weak creation for, for a bigger time frame. So it's some people use sell zones and buy zones on smaller time frames. They don't see consistency because they are applying them incorrectly. Play the long game, use bigger time frames, know the overall direction. So I want to show you an example of this. Let me see if I can find one. Euro USD. This one here, we had a nice reversal. So let's first start to analyze it first. So what we do, first step, we zoom out. We look at the entire chart, right? That's our first step. Say so we put in our trend lines. So let me just put my line there. I want to show you why I want to put it there. This is my first target. And I want it to be like a small zone. That's the reason why I like using zones because we adjust 
for this too so we, we have a nice buy right usually on a resistance like i'm seeing here don't worry guys it's gonna be easy for you as well you know it takes practice but you can be able to see this easily like we do now as long as we have a one test here second test here we know this was going to be a strong one because on on a retest so we're losing one to gain three so now the purpose of me getting here was to show you what i meant we also have a nice resistance here i like having my resistance as a zone so we have a nice resistance zone here you can see now about touches we have which makes it a very strong support structure now which was a previous resistance now a support structure so what a lot of people do is they go to the 30 minutes chart they will see a sell oh i'm seeing a nice sell being set up but if you focus on that one hour that small time frame it's only a retest of a bigger time frame this is just simply a retest we're seeing an overall buy here right if you look closer to the daily chart we're seeing that we have a nice level of support and resistance at basically this point here just put it this so already caters all of these points and let me basically put in the last one here that i see which is i'm gonna put this one here too because you know i want to make sure that it's going to be my first take profit for swinging basically so as you can see here for eurosd guys we see a nice buy setup so it's like it's like a nice flag or you know ascending triangle as you can see here we're seeing a nice ascending triangle being set up right secondly reversal of trends must be confirmed from daily weekly or monthly charts that one is the most important right people just want to force their thing so i want to show you the weekly chart we use for gold that we had a nice a shooting star here because we were looking at our resistance we correctly placed our resistance and you can see here we're testing the old the one that we actually had in around 2014 was testing that's the nice buy that we had and we're testing resistance here so now we went for a sell and we packed a lot because we know how to properly apply them so in the four hour chart will give you the heads for this reversal so now entry on retest will give good quality management and placing protective stop loss always place a stop loss regardless if you see a perfect setup you know because in all honesty you know the market doesn't care about you you must always make sure that you protect your account so now you need to identify the levels of support and the reasons for your profit targets like i've been saying have an exit strategy know when you're going to close it so moving your stop loss you understand even though you want to swing you want to swing for how long you're going to lose the momentum so you can swing with one stop loss and then it comes back up you just lost momentum you don't know when you're going to stop that swing too so it's also important to note so now you lock your profits by adjusting the stop loss as your trades progress so when it moves more gives you like 30 pips you can adjust your stop loss you know gives you more just you always know that your overall target is what hence you always win the long game your losses are always small but your profits are always big right and you can use small loss sizes we, we, we grow one of our accounts easily using small loss sizes i just want to show you that that's what we do so it is one of the kind that we grow using a small lot and if you can look close we're using 0 0.5 and we're able to double that account weekly that's when we had a nice volatile market and we were able to grow it so the volatility gave us more entries and we're able to win right as you can see so we, this one was basically you know a small take profit because it was a scalp that the reversal that you saw there and yeah, that's the kind of trade, trades we also take so it would depend on the ones that you want how you apply the strategy we basically up to you so now the indicators that we use we use the moving average from 2050 to 200 fibonacci rsi and the atr which is average true range we use them to measure volatility i'm gonna cover why we do that so now indicators are useful for identifying the area of value and understanding the market condition like we've said before they help you understand the market condition so they summarize the price that's what they do so indicators are useful for you to know how if you know how to apply them correctly like i've been saying so most traders don't understand the purpose of indicators and you don't want to be like them so now let's go there and let me show you how we can apply 
uh, a simple moving average. Okay, I feel like we, yeah, we had a nice trend here. So whenever you're in a nice trend that's being respected, you can move a moving average of basically 200 to know whether you have a buy momentum or sell momentum. As you can see, as long as the market is above this, we know that we have a nice buy momentum, right? Using data from the past, we saw that we're still in a nice buy area. We only look for sales underneath it. We look for overall buys as long as it's above. You can see, we can see the momentum here. As long as we have a trend, a strong trend, we would see the momentum above. So that's all we know that, okay, now we, we're seeing a small sell momentum. That's why I'm preparing my sales. It's not an indicator, it tells me what's the market condition. Now I'm looking for a sell. People want to enter a sell here. It's an, they say for them, it's a trigger. For me, I understand that it's a condition. What's the market condition? The, the condition change from a buy zone into a sell zone. I have now an edge because I understand how to use my tools, which is very important. Right, so let's continue with our slides. So now it helps us define the trend. Like we saw that the MA, we know that the trend was now moving from a bullish trend to now a bearish trend. The area of value, we can see now it was acting as a nice support. It was supporting the trend. So now we're supporting the downtrend. So an entry trigger is we saw that now I can use an entry trigger as some sort because if I have a candlestick that means that's being formed there, I would also still enter because you know that's what we used to as our entry level. So that's the, the nice part we use our technical analysis, guys. Thanks for tuning in.